Hey guys, this is Denny. And this is James from TDV. And today we have episode number 30. 30. Wow. So. We are old. We are doing some um, oolong, Shan Li Shi uh, oolong from Taiwan. Um, and this is from Tea Masters. Yep. Um, so, this is a spring 2013. It's going to be nice and fresh and beautiful. And uh, looking forward to it. It's some really good looking, nice, kind of lightly oxidized oolong. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah, and Tea Masters is one of the kind of like the long standing, um, both bloggers and vendors, um, on uh, on like facing the Western world as far as like Taiwanese oolong is concerned. Um, he's been blogging, I think, since 2004, which is a really, really long time. In multiple um, languages, apparently. Yeah, in French and English. So, um, yeah. Uh, and Shan Li Shi is one of like the classic um, mountains along with kind of like Ali Shan, Li Shan. Um, Dai Ling, which is Li Shan, but yeah, uh, so yeah, so we're gonna do a quick rinse here and mm-hmm. dive right in. Yeah, no doubt. Simple, I'm gonna get a little bit of the, uh, just stir it up a little bit, just make sure that there's no like sediment and all that stuff. Don't even need for a screen really for oolongs like this. Look at those teacups. And so we have about Eight grams of dry leaf with a 125 milliliter gaiwan, and yep. we're just gonna one. This smells great so far already. Very light though. Um, and one kind of interesting thing about um, mm-hmm. Stéphane, who is the French guy that runs uh, Tea Masters, um, is that he doesn't even rinse his tea. So that's how much confidence wow. he has that his tea is clean. Wow. Um, we're rinsing it um, because I guess we don't trust strangers, but. Um, yeah, but that's some, that's that's a strong vote of confidence for your tea. I will tell you that much. You know, I'm just actually unfamiliar with doing a lot of um, a lot of uh, teas without a rinse. So for me, that first steeping would probably even be challenging to do. Um, I'm always used to doing a rinse, and then depending on what it is, kind of like the ritualistic aspect. Yeah. In some sense. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's my green teas. I'll often skip it unless I'm like drinking a Chinese green, which I don't even do very often because I'm scared of those pesticides. But, um, yeah. So it looks like the leaves are opening up nicely, and like you said, they're very, very green. A little bit of oxidized, um, but kind of that is the more contemporary uh, style of Taiwanese oolongs. And we're getting a nice, very, very clear yellow color here. Yeah, beautiful. So very, quite nice. Beautiful quality of leaf. Mm, yeah, typical uh, kind of like high mountain flavors coming yep. out of the sky. Honey, sweet. Uh, a little bit kind of uh, floral, maybe. Yep. And, uh, yeah, this smells great. Looks really nice. Looks like it's going to get a little bit more saturated eventually here, but um, yeah. let's give it a go. Mm, nice full body. Um, yeah, it's, it's teasing at that bitterness, which I kind of like, mm-hmm. um, and it's kind of got that very crisp, creamy... Um, Typical high mountain. Definitely, yep. Light, be hard to drink this with food because it would obscure the flavor a little bit. Um, definitely. Yeah, so definitely on the first steeping light, high quality, um, beautiful leaves that open up that, the in the gaiwan immediately. Really nice. A lot of leaf. Yep. So how would you adjust this for your next steeping? I'd probably keep it at the same because especially since the first few steepings of oolong in particular... Um, the actual leaf is still going to be a little bit hard and brittle uh, at the very inmost part of the leaf itself Mm -hmm. until you get it kind of absorbed with all that water and because we steeped it for so little time um, and so much leaf, yeah, I'd probably keep it about the same. It's probably like 15 seconds. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. Um, We're definitely getting a fair amount of flavor here and I definitely would not extend the steep time by too long if Mm -hmm. I were to uh, go again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really nice. And a little bit about Shan Li Shi as a mountain. Um, like I said, it is one of kind of like the traditional, well, not even traditional necessarily, um, but one of the standard Taiwanese mountains. It's very, very close to Dongding, actually. So in terms of terroir and stuff, um, similar in that regard. And it actually stands for kind of like the Pine Forest Mountain. So if you're looking for kind of like what the terroir would be like, it's very, very, a lot of cliffs there. Um, similar kind of to kind of like the Dayu Ling region, which is the highest region in Taiwan. Mm-hmm. Um, and its peaks don't reach as high as the highest peaks of Taiwan, but they get to 1,700, 1,800 meters, 
which is significantly above that 1,000 meter cutoff for kind of Gaoshan high mountain lungs. Very tasty, um, really pleasant. Yeah. Well, I would drink this in the morning. Um, yeah, yeah, really nice. Yeah, like 10 or 10.30, like after your taste buds have kind of woken up enough to really just appreciate the flavors. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, should we go for another steep? Definitely. Um, this is also very fresh, too, and you can see just by how verdant the actual leaves themselves look. Um, we've never tasted this before, so that we're kind of experimenting live here. Yeah. At the same time, we have had a lot of Taiwanese right. high mountain oolong, and Chan Li Shi is certainly one of those yeah. mountains. Yeah. Cool. What else have you been drinking these days, man? Uh, I've been drinking as the seasons change here. For me, it's been kind of like a lot of wooey and um, some some really nice wooies actually from Yunnan sourcing that I'd like to review if we didn't have a list of this this many things to review. But um, those wooies as well as um, ripe pours, which I find to be very seasonally attractive right now. What about yourself? Um, I'd say similar. I actually haven't been drinking the wooey, um, although I'd love to. I'm just out. Um, I have been drinking uh, Red Pour and Black Tea. Um, and then I just have my regular, so Oriental Beauty, which actually coincidentally is probably the only oolong tea that I have from gone from uh, rinsing to not rinsing and just going straight for it. Interesting. As per recommendation from our friend uh, Eric Glass. And... Um, Works yeah, well. huh. yeah, it works really well actually. Um, just patient, be patient with it, uh, and um, yeah, it's just such a beautiful tea too. So interesting. Yeah, especially because of Oriental Beauty not being purposely processed without pesticides, it is safer to consume without. That makes sense. It's very difficult for Oriental Beauty to be kind of a low, like a uh, kind of a budget tea, like a right. daily drinker. It, there's always has to be some resemblance of quality considering it needs to be done without pesticides in the summertime unless you're getting completely defrauded in that case good luck you gotta buy a lot to get it cheapish yes which is what i did <laughs> <laughs> all right so this is the second seedling cheers mm. even fuller body um mm -hmm. nice Kind of vegetal, nice, a bit. nice, uh, yeah, definitely a bit vegetal. Sticks in your mouth, which I find to be quite pleasant. I'm actually getting a little bit of like a. This is not, it might sound strange, but like a little pepper spice, not not super, like very subtle. Uh, but um, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, actually, I've had like strange beers that have been flavored with peppers, and they're disgusting. <laughs> but uh, there's something good about what I'm that experience that is might be in this a little bit. Um, but yeah, very nice. Um, just clean, very clear clean. Taste. Yeah, like even just looking at the color of the uh, the tea itself, and very very clean. Looking at some of the, the leaves, like, leaves are, are enormous. Yeah, beautiful. nice big leaves. Mm -hmm. Really high quality. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This could go for a bunch of steepings, no doubt. Yeah, and if I were to do this again, I would probably end up. So we kind of were at that awkward place where we have a lot of leaf for one steep, but. Not quite enough to tone it down. I would probably tone it down. And, in fact, Stephane um, over at Tea Masters, I don't know if his, I'm saying his name exactly right, but mm -hmm. he's really, really famous for actually using a low leaf-to-water ratio. <laughs> so a lot of tea people, when they get more into tea, and I would say the same is true for myself, start to use more and more tea mm -hmm. um, to the amount of water. Um, but he's kind of gone the opposite way, which is really interesting to think about. He was experiment with that. Yeah. Well, it was a fantastic offering from him. Um, thank you, sir. And uh, beautiful tea. This will last for a while, so we'll keep on drinking and uh, we'll yeah. call it there. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks Cheers. for watching. See you guys.